you could shine a black light on a horror movie, you'd be faced with all sorts of mysteries. Most of them would be dubious stains and disturbing splatters that we won't question the origin of, but amongst all the goop, there'd be a good dose of invisible ink, revealing plenty of hidden messages scrawled in the margins by directors. These films offer up moral quandaries and allegories that only become apparent when you really start stretching what's offered up on screen. Film is a medium for social reflection, after all, and the mirror doesn't always show what's good. Taking a look at the films that buried their ulterior motives under layers of blood, grime and terror then, let's see where the world of horror has drawn its inspiration from to make it all the more scary. From the pains of eating disorders, to the crisis of modern social media, to the truth of war. We're about to go elbow deep in this socio-political mess. Bring your rubber gloves. I am the secret mention of Ash from What Culture, and these are eight horror movies with incredible hidden messages you totally missed. 8. Aliens The Vietnam War You'd be right to ask where exactly in the Vietnam War that a giant, skulking, penis face monster started wiping out troops whilst they fended them off with big flamethrowers. But hey, this one goes a little deeper than a sci-fi showdown. Fans and critics alike have pointed out how Aliens reads like an allegory for the Vietnam War, with a small, heavily equipped marine force heading into what they thought was an easy victory, only to discover an overwhelming guerrilla operation on the other side. Naturally, the colonial marines get their asses handed to them for their over-reliance on technology in the face of a cunning foe proving that arrogance means nothing when you're up against a new kind of enemy. James Cameron himself stated that he used the Vietnam War as a template to bring his marines to life, studying the language used by American forces and the reality of combat to inform his directorial decisions. Whilst the xenomorphs are their own entity, the focus is supposed to be on the marine attitude to their foe, going in hot, undermined at every turn, and desperately seeking to destroy the base when they realise they're in over their heads. 7. The Shining – The Death of Native America The Shining has been seen as many things over the years. A classic horror movie, a modern-day take on the Minotaur of legend, and of course, Stanley Kubrick's personal apology for faking the moon landing. But underneath all the straw-clutching of weird internet fans, however, rings one theory that many believe to be the defining truth of The Shining – that it's an allegory for the death of Native America. The key for this comes when you take into account that the Overlook is cited as being built on an ancient Indian burial ground. It's not a part of the source novel, so was something Kubrick added in as a reference point. When you couple that with the Navajo wall hangings and the clear supplies of Calumet baking powder, a brand that depicts a man in a Native American headdress, then the theory can be played out a little more clearly. Suddenly, the elevator of blood is symbolic for the genocide of indigenous people. Halloran's death by axe is indicative of the betrayal of colonizers in America, and the Overlook's name itself is a representation of people's ability to look past these past atrocities. Kubrick has hidden references to Native Americans throughout his movie as a reflection of the US being ignorant to its own bloody past, much in the same way the country would rather sweep it under one of the hotel's pointedly patterned rugs. 6. Drag Me to Hell – Bulimia Walking the line as a subtle horror comedy, Drag Me to Hell is the farcical horror movie that serves up both terrifying demons and talking goats in equal measure. And whilst it thrives on the story of a young woman plagued by a curse and a whole host of absurd demonic interventions, the supernatural threat isn't all that it appears to be. Drag Me to Hell is the slow descent of Christine as she loses her mind and body to an eating disorder. She's controlled by her internal struggle with bulimia, an illness that plays out as the Lamia hunting down her soul, when in actuality it is herself she's stuck in an eternal battle with. Christine was known as an overweight child dubbed the Swine Queen, as we learn from a photograph, and has tried to shake that past continuously by becoming a successful, attractive banker. Food is the link to her past that she refuses to acknowledge, with the demonic Lamia manifesting every time she's in close proximity to eating. He always attacks in the kitchen, appears as an eyeball in her cake, and uses vomit as a continuous form of torture. The old woman is a representation of what her illness will do to her if she can't curb it. She's her future, toothless, ugly, and stealing candy from the bank's desk. The horror of Drag Me to Hell is the pressure of society on young women to be attractive and, importantly, thin and it condemns Christine to hell in the process. 5. Beetlejuice – Agoraphobia 
Beetlejuice is one of the defining movies of a generation, encapsulating Tim Burton's wonderful, absolutely batch vision of a world inhabited by the dead, and making horror all the more fun for it. The plot depicts Barbara and Adam Maitland, who are rather unfortunately killed in a car accident, but that doesn't stop their spirits from wandering back home. Once they're inside, it is where they stay, spending the entirety of the movie attempting to scare off another family that are looking to move in. That the Maitlands are permanently trapped within the confines of the mortal world is interesting, as one Redditor has likened it to the experience of agoraphobia. Agoraphobics are terrified of leaving their home or personal safe space, with the prospect of leaving an incredibly daunting task. If you consider how the Maitlands experience a vast wasteland full of sandworms and death when they open up the door of their home, then it is not hard to link the two together as a realisation of this type of fear. Adam even has a version of the local town in his attic as a way of connecting with the outside world, perhaps in a way that he never could really do in person. That Barbara and Adam spend their time attempting to make their home their own again after a traumatic event, and the film revolves around the concept of personal space, seems to compound this take even further. 4. Battle Royale – The Pressures of Education The infamous Japanese movie that The Hunger Games secretly pays hush money to under the table, Battle Royale sees a group of students dumped on an island and forced to fight to the death for one victor to reign supreme. And as with everything on this list, it is not allowed to just be a brutal bit of fun in the name of horror movies. Instead, it is an exploration of the pressures that are mounted on students in the Japanese education system. Didn't the uniforms give it away? The kids are forced into war with each other to survive as the last one standing, a satirical take on how young people are forced to step on each other to reach the top of their educational potential. Only one can be the best in class, and only one is allowed to keep their life. When we see these young people dying, it's almost always when they're showing compassion or friendship to one another, as doing anything other than deftly following the rules is punished to the extreme. It is a pretty clear allegory for what breaking the rules will get you. 3. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre – Go Vegetarian The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a revelation of the horror genre, inspiring slasher movies and iconic villains in heaving, sweaty waves since its release in 1974. And whilst it's responsible as the bloody granddaddy of many gory movies we've come to know and love over the years, it's also a tentpole of, uh, the animal rights community. Wait. What? It's been posited that the film puts its characters into the shoes of animals sent to the slaughterhouse, experiencing the ingrained fear that the creatures subjected to industrial agriculture would in their final moments. It's not even that far-fetched a reading when you consider the film's premise, boiled down to its core from the first death on screen. This is where we see a man enter a seemingly safe house with no idea what's waiting for him on the other side, receiving the blunt end of a hammer before being cut up into bite-sized chunks. Of course, the Sawyer family used to run a slaughterhouse, and they enact these practices on the victims that come onto their land. Meat hooks are undoubtedly an integral part of the Texas Chainsaw experience, as is consuming the people they kill later in the film as Sally watches on in horror. The victims of this movie are the terrified animals we consume every day. It makes you think twice about a steak when it's a human leg, right? Two. Bird Box – Social Media Remember the Bird Box challenge where people were wandering around with blindfolds on into oncoming traffic? Me neither, but the internet sure made it out as if it was some global epidemic of idiocy. Interestingly, that phenomenon is an apt extension of the very real problem Bird Box was trying to represent. That social media is the unseen monster destroying our daily lives. Why social media? It is an ever-present, maddening force on a global scale that has proven time and time again to disrupt our mental health, yet it is only visible to those that are looking for it. And for those that have been taken in by its power and force others to look too, there is a clear line that can be drawn to the internet trolls and their intent on hurting people online. To further reinforce this reading, at the beginning of Bird Box, sisters Jessica and Mallory have a conversation about Mallory's painting, one that aptly appears to be the Last Supper imagined as a group of people on their phones. Mallory quips, the loneliness is just incidental. It's really about people's inability to connect. Meta commentary for the film, anyone? We see computer screens smashed as a front line of defense, we hear impossible memories that would only be normally accessible through digital recording, and we have a straight-up warning from a news anchor saying to avoid social media, to then be taken to a world where technology is a thing of the past. 
Innovation really is the enemy. One, the fly, disease and old age. Jeff Goldblum in the 1987 iteration of The Fly is some pure movie magic. A scientist that accidentally combines his genetic makeup with that of a housefly, he slowly becomes something between the two as the film progresses, wanting to transform his girlfriend into the same kind of monster so they can experience being together on a whole new level. Oi oi. That he gets all gross and icky throughout the movie isn't just Cronenberg playing up to his favourite body horror conventions though, as it actually represents the fear of getting older. Goldblum devolves rather graphically from a strapping young chap that's full of fly goodness into a horrible, wrinkly, disgusting mess as the genes take a further hold on him, going through what's essentially the ageing process at breakneck, or break arm, speed to everyone else's horror. Cronenberg depicts this state with such disgust as it is a reflection on the inevitability of decay we will all go through. Goldblum is basically a walking corpse before he becomes the gross little fly man that sheds his prior body, playing on the ingrained fear we are all born with of growing old, decaying on our own bodies and eventually dying. And that's our list. What other secrets did you miss the first time around? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash and this has been What Culture. Make sure to subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this. And don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. Thanks for watching.